welcome everyone so on our today's class we'll discuss about vector atomic model now this vector atomic model uh, to discuss about this vector atomic model two things are very important number one the space quantization and number two the concept of spin so so now we'll discuss about the space quantization the orbital plane of electron and hence the orbital angular momentum of the electron in the atom can be oriented in space only in some limited number of spatial direction that means angular momentum will be directed on only certain spatial directions that means if we consider the orbital plane of electron or the angular momentum of the electron it cannot randomly direct it in any direction it will have certain spatial directions only so our angular momentum of the electron let's take it pl so pl will be equals to lh cut where Quantum mechanically, if we consider it, PL is equals to root over L into L plus 1 H cut. Now, L can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 up to N minus 1, where N is our principal quantum number. Now, for L equals to 0, we get s orbital and for l equals to 1 we get p and l equals to 2 we get d orbital now according to space quantization spin angular momentum should also be quantized so just like our orbital angular momentum our spin angular momentum should also be quantized so p s will be equals to s h cut now if we consider the quantum mechanical values of s that means according to quantum mechanics according to quantum mechanics p s equals to root over s into s plus 1 into h cut now s can take values plus minus half only so here this s can take only two values one is plus half and another is minus half this s is called spin quantum number now since the orbital and spin motion are both quantized in magnitude and in directions that's why orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum these two are quantized vectors because they have a fixed magnitude from our previous calculation we see that ps equals to sh cut and pl equals to lh cut so this um, PL and PS have a quantized uh, magnitude that means they have a fixed magnitude and they also acquire some fixed directions only that's why they called them as quantized vectors and depending on these quantized vectors the atomic model we get is called the vector atomic model so the model we get is called vector atomic model depending on these quantized vectors this atomic model we get now magnetic moment quantum number ml okay so a magnetic field has a directive influence on orbital motion of the electron so uh, in an external magnetic field b ml uh, can orient only in certain directions uh, so uh, ml can take values uh, 2l number of values depending on the value of l 
so ml can take 12 plus 1 number of values depending on the value of l suppose ml can take values plus l l minus 1 l minus 2 up to 0 and then minus 1 minus 2 up to minus l so ml can take values from plus l to minus l um, depending on the value of l uh, it will have total 12 plus 1 number of values from plus l to minus l now as you can see for l equals to 3 ml can take this different value so we will consider the case l equals to 3 now for l equals to 3 uh, as you can see from the diagram ml can take values plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 now cos theta equals to ml by l which is equals to ml by root over l into l plus 1 now we will consider magnetic spin quantum number so a magnetic field also has a directive influence on spin motion of the electron so in a magnetic field b ms can have two values plus half and minus half now from the diagram as you can see uh, the values of ms equals to plus minus half so for in b magnetic field b this is ms equals to plus half and this one is ms equals to minus half so now total angular momentum j according to vector model j is a vector sum of l and s now j equals to l plus s so according to the vector atomic model l and s both are quantized vectors and uh, j is also mm, a vector sum of l and s so j equals to l plus s now from our previous calculation we see that uh, j the total angular momentum is the vector sum of l and s so we can add up l and s in parallel and in anti-parallel directions also so j equals to l plus s from our previous calculation so here this one is l this is s so j equals to l plus s now here l and s are directed anti-parallel to each other so here this one is j so j equals to l minus s now for the single electron single electron j equals to l plus s and j equals to l minus s for single electron the value of j can be l plus s and l minus s so if we consider the case where j equals to l plus half and j equals to l minus half now for single electron case j can have two values l plus half and l minus half when l equals to zero now we will consider the case when l equals to zero so when l equals to zero j equals to half now as we know j is the vector sum of l and s uh, so whenever j uh, will precess around z axis making angle phi with it l and s will also precess around j so j will precess around the z axis and l and s uh, will precess around j in this fashion now from our this diagram you can understand it very clearly that now consider this diagram this second diagram uh, now here you can see that j will precess around b and l and s will precess around j so whenever j will precess around b in this way and l and s will also precess around j in this fashion now the angle between 
L and S. We'll calculate the angle between L and S. From our previous discussion, we see that um, J is the vector sum of L and S. Now, what will be the angle between L and S? So, J equals to, as we know, L plus S. Now, j equals to l plus s uh, that means j square equals to l plus s dot l plus s it will be the dot product of l plus s with l plus s so j square equals to l plus s dot l plus s which is equals to l square plus a square plus 2 l dot s here we have simply calculated the dot product of L plus S with L plus S. Now, if theta be the angle between L and S, so from this expression we can get that J square is equals to L square plus A square plus 2 L S cos theta. Now, cos theta equals to j square minus l square minus a square by 2 l s. So, cos theta equals to j square minus l square minus a square by 2 l s. Now, if we put the quantum mechanical values of uh, j, l and s, we will get the value of cos theta. So, from our previous calculation, we know that cos theta equals to j square minus l square minus a square by 2 l s. Now, cos theta equals to j into j plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 minus s into s plus 1 by 2 l into l plus 1 root over l into sorry root over l into l plus 1 into root over s into s plus 1 so this will be the value of cos theta so today we have discussed about um, the vector atomic model and on our next class we will discuss about the spectroscopic notation and we will discuss some problems based on the spectroscopic notation also.